I have cells from 1999 that were stored at about 20% state of charge. Put them on in 2013, like new. Hey guys, it's Kim Java here, and we've got another unique perspective on Teslas and EVs for you today. This time, all about your range under extreme conditions. So we've dug up dozens of studies involving millions of miles looking at only electric vehicles driven in both extreme heat and extreme cold and found some really fascinating stuff. So most of you guys already know that lithium ion cells in your EVs and really any consumer product dramatically improves its longevity when kept at a lower state of charge. So today we are taking it a step further and showing you the role that temperature plays on not only degradation, but more specifically, I'll give you a formula so you can easily ballpark your range in any temperature. You'll also see who is the envy of all EVs in the world getting as much as 115% of their rated range and their batteries degrade far less than everyone else just because of where they live. Okay, ready? Let's go. Now most people assume extreme cold is the death to all EV range, but I think you'll be surprised that extreme heat can be a massive range killer as well, and maybe even more so. No, but I'm serious. If you keep any battery as cold as possible, it will last longer. So any, any lithium ion cell, keep it in the fridge when you're not using it, it'll last longer. But when it comes to range loss in cold weather, most people assume it's because of reduced battery performance. You probably already know that lithium ion batteries are more sluggish in extreme cold. That's not surprising since cold air impacts their ability to store and release energy. But did you know this can actually have less of an impact on your range than something as simple as your auxiliary load? So let me explain. Your auxiliary load comes from your creature comforts like your heater and your air conditioning that you're probably already aware of all the way down to the satellite navigation, the center screen, the lights, power steering, those 12 speakers, and of course the BMS that regulates the battery pack and etc. So under perfect conditions, these extra load costs you about 20% of your rated range out the door. Now let's make it a summer heat wave or an Arctic blast and you're down as much as 50% of the displayed range just at the start of your trip. So according to a new study which looked at data from over 5.2 million trips taken by over 4,000 EVs, which by the way included over 100 different makes, models, and your combination of EVs, they found the following. Your day-to-day -day range is actually more affected by regulating the auxiliary heating and cooling of the cabin than anything else. In fact, when using the HVAC in your EV, heating is much more energy intensive than cooling. Further, heating the cabin can consume as much as 60 times more energy than cooling it would. So in cars like the Model S and X, you can help by engaging range mode. This reduces HVAC power, turns daytime running headlights off, utilizes torque sleep, and reduces power in the rear motors of these vehicles. That lessens your auxiliary load. The cabin heater in the Model S and X consume as much as six kilowatts of energy, where in range mode, that is reduced to three kilowatts. Just to compare, seat warmers always consume 100 watts of energy. Now, up until recently, it was pretty clear that using seat warmers to warm yourself versus the HVAC to warm the entire cabin was the clear winner in extending your range. Although that still may be the case, Model Y introduced something groundbreaking for Tesla's just under its front trunk. And I'm sure there's some kind of joke in there. As you see, we took all that out. We took all this out. Here is what it looks like. Brake fluid, we got some coolant. We've got this huge air intake. The most interesting thing is actually right there. That is the heat pump. It became the very first Tesla to use a heat pump in its HVAC system, as opposed to the resistive heating HVAC found in the Model S, X, and until recently, Model 3 as well. All of those Teslas had always used resistive heating, which creates one unit of heat from every unit of energy stored in the battery. Not very efficient. When it's cold out, there's already more drain on your battery because your car is actually working overtime to bring that pack temperature up to its sweet spot. So turn on the cabin heater and guess what? 
This trains the battery even more. But the Model Y, and as of very recently, the latest Model 3 is coming off the line, all use the heat pump. Probably the refresh Model S and X will too. This leads to significantly better efficiency as the Model Y manual notes on page 131. It reads, Model Y uses a heat pump to maximize efficiency. Therefore, your air conditioning compressor and external fan will run and make noise when outside temperatures are low or your vehicle is heating or supercharging. So to put this more simply, a heat pump is more or less the same method used to remove heat from the inside of your refrigerator, except in the case of the Model 3 and Y, the heat is removed from the outside of the cabin, which since the temperature outside is above absolute zero, there's actually heat to be taken. And it's that heat that's pumped into your car with incredible efficiency. Elon even took to Twitter to praise the Tesla team for its design, saying the Model Y heat pump is some of the best engineering I've seen in a while. You know, it must be good. <laughs> And because I know you guys will want to know, here's how that engineering transfers to real life. Our friend Bjorn Nyland over in Norway recently tested two Model 3s side by side, a newer one with the heat pump and an older one without it. He heated the cabin of each car to 70 Fahrenheit or 21 Celsius and found that the newer Model 3 only used 735 watts of energy during his multi-hour test whereas the older three needed a whopping 2,200 watts of energy for the same test. That's a threefold energy improvement in these newer models with the heat pump. Do you wanna tell them about today's sponsor or should I? So as you guys know, I am a busy mom and I spend a lot of time in my car driving the kids around and today's sponsor is Audible. We've been using them for a few years now. It's so nice to be able to learn something or listen to a story in the car while I'm driving. I have a lot of books on here. Some of them are parenting books, some about basketball for my husband and my son, and there are a few about electric cars. And one of my favorites is Car Wars by John Fialka. It's about the rise, fall, and resurgence of electric cars. I think you guys will really like it too. And it's not just audiobooks. You get podcasts, guided wellness programs, A-list comedy, and more. If you haven't tried Audible, right now might be your best chance because you're getting one of their best offers of the year. The Presence Day event gets you a membership for just $9.95 a month for the first six months. To get started with your free 30-day trial, check out audible.com slash kimjava or text kimjava to 500-500. So again, that's audible.com slash kimjava or text kimjava to 500-500. So there have been so many studies that have also highlighted the dramatic effects of cold temperature and the use of cabin heat. This was one of the most fascinating ones looking at the 2019 long range Model 3s without a heat pump, but you have to see it for yourself you'll notice that the energy consumption follows a pretty linear pattern and is predictable all the way down to zero degrees Fahrenheit. For every five degree drop in temperatures, there is a 4% increase in the energy consumption. At temperatures around zero Fahrenheit, they saw a 55% drop in your rated range compared to when it was a mild 60 Fahrenheit. Now, would you guys believe it if I told you there was a certain temperature where not only your EV thrives in, but it actually also exceeds the EPA rated range by as much as 15%. The study was conducted by Geotab, which is a data analytics provider for the automotive industry. This study was specific to EVs and it looked at over 4,000 fully electric cars taking a total of 5 million trips. I'll link this below. They found that most EVs follow a similar temperature range curve that's almost always regardless of the make or model of the car. While both cold or hot temperatures impacted range, colder climates were the biggest offender. There is a trade-off though. Even though the range is hindered by the cold, they learned that your battery longevity dramatically improved over the ones in hotter climates. Lastly, they found that the optimum temperature for efficiency is right around 21.5 degrees Celsius or 70 Fahrenheit. So if you own EVs in cities like San Diego, Lima, Peru, or Perth, Australia, you most likely have a sweet spot for battery longevity and range potential in your EVs, and we are all jealous. 
at that very temperature, most EVs actually overperformed in the range department, exceeding their EPA estimates. So this graph shows the range an EV will get compared to its rated range at any given outside temperature. What's incredible is that at around 70 degrees Fahrenheit, EVs are performing better than advertised, peaking at 115% of their rated range in this experiment. That's insane. But notice as the temps go up or down from this sweet spot, the loss of range is apparent. At a frigid five degrees Fahrenheit or minus 15 Celsius, the finding almost perfectly mirrors the Model 3 breakdown I showed you a minute ago, which resulted in 55% hit to your rated range. Meaning an EV with a 300 mile range would only manage about 160 miles of driving in temperatures around five degrees Fahrenheit. That makes you wanna move, doesn't it? And how about some realistic temperatures? So drive when it's closer to the freezing mark outside and your 300 mile range will actually be 225 miles or 78% of its rated amount. Now the cold always gets a bad rap, but do look closely and you'll see that the slope for the impact of your range actually drops slightly faster the hotter the temperatures get. Meaning if you're driving in temperatures that are 105 to 110 degrees, the impacts are pretty much in line with driving in sub-freezing weather you'll see about 45 to 55% range hit. The only saving grace is that far less people experience those hot extremes that are 110 or hotter than the cold sub-freezing temperatures. The Tesla, I don't know if you can hear it. It is loud. It is blast. working overtime over there. I don't even think I have the, the air on right now. It's just cooling the batteries. So interestingly enough, lithium ion cells prefer about the same temperatures as humans do, the low 70s. They found that if you get into your car and the outside temperature is below 68, you're probably more likely to turn on the heat. And above 74, you'll probably switch to the AC. An EV's onboard thermal management system is designed to draw energy to warm or cool the battery pack. Therefore, the car is working to heat and cool both the occupants and the batteries if it's below that temperature of 21 Celsius or 70 Fahrenheit. So if there's one takeaway, remember this. The major offender for causing range loss in cold and hot temperatures is auxiliary load. Heat or cool the human, not the whole car. Heating the seats and the steering wheel draws between 75 to 100 watts of energy, while heating the entire cabin will draw about 3,000 watts of energy in most Model 3s and upward of 6,000 watts of energy in a Model X. So just like you would warm up your body before an exercise, warm up or precondition your car while it's plugged in before a trip in extreme temps. This would significantly minimize the load on your thermal management system from the get-go, giving you a head start for a better range. Parking in a mild garage also gives you a similar effect. And lastly, we always say keep your EV plugged in when not actively charging. This allows the internal system to maintain battery temperature controls, prolonging the life of your battery in the long run. And it's probably reasonable to think that in a couple of years, most of these things will be a thing of the past as range continues to increase, batteries become more resistive to extremes, and tech like heat pumps are introduced across all EVs. So the draw on energy is much more negligible. Until then, knowledge is power, and hopefully you guys learned something new in this video. If so, the biggest thank you we can get is by hitting that like button. So I'm also gonna go ahead and link the EV study that we broke down for you in the description below. And within that link, you'll find this really cool tool which allows you to pick from one of the 14 different EV makes and models and slide your temperature to see how the range is impacted to the actual mile. It's pretty cool. I think you guys will have some fun with it. And lastly, if you like the shirt that I'm wearing, check out our website, itskimjava.com for some really fun and unique EV and Tesla inspired gear. We've got shirts with some of Elon's best quotes on them, cookie cutters in the shape of Cybertrucks and other Teslas, screen protectors, and plug and play Sentry USBs. With all that said, thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you next time. That extreme heat can be a massive range killer as well. Maybe even for the Further, heating the cabin, further, like farther heating it. Farther. No, further. For, I hate this word. It's always one of those words. Further heating it. No. So, further heating it. Okay. No. Oh, yeah. no. On five degrees Celsius. Five degrees Celsius Fahrenheit. <laughs> <laughs> Where? Okay.
because I'm thinking about like stupid jokes I want to say. <laughs> For 75 percent causing range loss in cold. <laughs> That's like you combine cold and hot, you get cold. <laughs> it's below the temperatures of 21 Celsius or 71. Oh my god, I'm so dyslexic. <laughs> system to maintain. I'm so bad. Sorry, this doesn't suck to edit. <laughs> That's what happens when you record really late at night.